This video is going to be a very, very long one. I think it's going to total at about half an hour when I'm done editing with it. So I'm just putting this in. I'm going to put some timestamps on the right side. Uh, the introduction is going to be shorter. It's going to explain the basics that will cover uh, every single one of these helicopters, every single unguided ordnance attack helicopter in the game. And I'm going to specifically play through the UH-1, MI-24, AH-1, and K-50. So if this is something that would interest you, uh, just switch to those specific helicopters. Uh, if not, you know, see, maybe you'll be able to take something from this video. I worked really hard to put it together. I think it's a good tutorial as to how to... Hello everyone, this is DMSP, and I'm here today to teach you guys how to fly rocket-only helicopters. Now, many of you people have asked me if I could make a sort of tutorial or stream or something to describe uh, how to fly these things, because people in general are not good at flying them. That is no fault of the person at hand. They're a very, very difficult vehicle to learn and be effective at. And in reality, practice is the only way you're ever going to get good at these helicopters. However, there are a couple of key tips that I think are universal across all of the unguided rocket attack helicopters that I think that if you learn, you'll be able to become a bit more effective uh, with these helicopters and uh, just do better in them. The three main things that you need to focus on, and I call this the triangle of survivability, is cover, speed, and luck. Now, now the luck may be an interesting thing to have in a sort of triangle of uh, survivability, but it's pretty important, and I'll get to that later. The first thing I want to talk about is speed. It's straightforward. When you're coming in, don't waste any time, just go in. You wanna be traveling as fast as you possible, but not too fast to make yourself unmaneuverable. Now, this is especially for a couple of helicopters. I'm thinking of the K-50 and the Mi-24. They're incredibly fast helicopters. I assume the G-Lynx might have this problem too. In the Mi-24, for example, if you're traveling at 330 kilometers an hour, there is no way you're gonna begin, you're, you're kind of gonna have no chance to make any maneuvers to attack any targets around you. Now, with these helicopters, you want to make sure that you are going very fast on the way there, your maximum speed to minimize the time between you taking off and you arriving at the battlefield. However, as you get closer to the battlefield, depending on your helicopter, you may want to start slowing down and think about maneuverability. The next thing is cover. Now, cover is your lifeblood, not speed in these helos. The one advantage you have as a helicopter is you are able to utilize the outside of the map. You can go way further away. Uh, then any of the ta these tanks can fire and when you're closer to the map you can use the terrain such as hills uh, Sometimes even forests will be able to help you But that's a bit more difficult now that they've added this feature that you can lock on and track helicopters and aircraft It doesn't matter what tank you are. You can just press X and it pops up on your screen This new feature has made it much more difficult to play these helicopters but it's still manageable depending on your skill and <laughs> how willing you are to suffer for a little bit of fun. Your altitude is also a very important thing and I'm putting that into cover because uh, the lower you are, the more covered you are. Now, <laughs> many people make the just critical mistake, especially when they're coming in early game of coming in high. Unless you are really, really good with the FFRs or whatever rocket you have on your helicopter, you are going to get shot down, whether it be by SPAA, tank machine guns, sometimes even tank main cannons. I remember once I shot down an Alouette from three kilometers away because he was maybe 200 meters up, and that was with my T-62, so I didn't even have a machine gun. But I still shot him down anyways because he was traveling way too high. The lower you are, the less likely you are to be taken out by fire. Now, if you mix speed with that low altitude, you are able to create a much, much, much more effective fighting vehicle. If you're low and you're traveling fast and you're up close, it is much, much harder for anybody but SPAA to do anything against you. What I think is <laughs> an important part of the triangle, but completely out of your control, is obviously your luck. You oh, God. <laughs> can have the best games ever, even if there's a team full of SPAA, if the enemy team just isn't that good. 
You know, the skill of other players, their experience, that is a huge, huge, huge defining thing when you play these vehicles because it, it totally defines whether these guys are going to be able to lead their shots and get you or whether they're going to miss. They're not going to use their machine guns because they forget or something, you know? If there are other helos on your team, you are actually in a much better position because these guys are likely going to come in high. They're going to do stupid stuff. They'll take the fire whilst you can stay low and get in and hit the guys after they've revealed their positions or they're focused on other targets. Uh, that's also why, you know, if you're playing with a buddy, you'll usually do much, much better than if you're playing on, by yourself. And I wrap that into luck as well. Um, some other things include whether the team spawns with SPA at the beginning of the game. You know, I sometimes spawn in SPA at the beginning of the game. I love the ZSU 57 2, the M19 Duster. I think they're great tank destroyers. And I spawn with them at the beginning of the game, and many other people do as well. And, you know, if you happen to be being, you begin your strike run, you know, things are looking good, you get one tank, and then boom, some random guepard who was spawned in at the beginning knocks you out. It happens all the time. The last thing is, of course, you know, you can do everything right. You can come in low, you can come in fast, you can use the terrain, you can be right behind their spawn and you clip up over the hill, but there just happens to be some random Leo who was sitting in the spawn, he heard you, he already was facing the right way, and that's it. And that'll happen again and again and again and again and again. And you have to accept that if you want to play these helicopters, because this is how these helicopters play. You are going to get shot down over and over and over and over again, even if you do everything right, and it's gonna be completely out of your control. For many people, it's infuriating. And many, many, many people quit these helicopters. However, you know, if you learn to get them right, and if you can ignore the instant dying, then these things may be a bit of fun. I have a huge amount of fun in them because it's fast, it's intense, it's action packed, and if you get it right, it's a ton of fun. So those I think are the basics that you need to have when you're flying these helicopters. You need to have a good mindset, you need to be very focused and attentive as to what's going on and understanding the battlefield, and you need to have this uh, triangle of survivability on your side if you want to pull through and have a good game. Now this starts off as a completely normal attack run. I see a random BT-5 at the edge of the map, fire at him. Unfortunately, I only clipped his track and I didn't want to waste more rockets on the guy, so I end up looping back. The thing about the UH-1 Japan is it's, <laughs> its rocket load is atrocious. You get 38 rockets, you can't research anymore, uh, so you really have to make them count. Thankfully, I've perfected what I call the two-tap where you fire a total of four rockets, and it works perfectly, just like that T-62 that went down right there. Um, but, you know, you gotta get really good. Uh, in this game, uh, despite the fact that I got the T-62, somebody spawned in and hit my rotor with something. Rotor starts to die, which this thing is incredibly susceptible to, and I end up making a soft landing, and that ends the game for me. Rolling into the next one, I'm making a nice and absolutely perfect attack run using the terrain, in this case the beach on Normandy, to stay below everybody. And I'm about to show you what I consider to be a normal attack run, getting two or three tanks and dying. A normal attack run is actually just getting shot down before you get zero tanks, but I'm hoping that this video will make your attack runs look something more like this. As I'm coming in, I see a couple of guys by the church, an Object 120 and a T... 54 type vehicle it ended up being a type 69 get them both and i was gonna loop back but uh uh there was a random bmp who was chilling on a i couldn't see him he could see me thanks to the lock-on feature and that was that for that game thankfully though uh you know this video i'm hoping that if you watch this video and you're able to actually take something from it this is what your games are going to start looking like I'm coming in and I already have a big advantage because I've got other friendly helicopters and they're doing a great job. There was an AH-1 who was knocking out one of the guys on the side and the UH-1 who's killing some people. I come in, track a T-62. I wish I could have gotten a critical hit on him, but there was not much to do. I got to get out of there. Um, then I spot an M-48, uh, use the two-tap rocket trick, and he's dead. And it was nice and fast, about two targets. I'm looping around and I see B. And there's a T-62 there, two tap, he's gone. And now, uh, I realized that I was much higher than I should have been, so I descended quickly. And I head back towards their spawn, where I see an absolutely chaotic amount of vehicles spawning in. 
Unfortunately, the guy I shot at had spawn protection on, but there was a T44 that didn't. I'm able to get, a, uh, get him with a side shot, and I have 18 rockets left. I decide to hold for a little bit. Uh, it wouldn't last for very long, even though holding is a good strategy sometimes later in games. Um, you know, there might be a random guy just like that tank that shot at me, so I realize I gotta get my rockets off and go home. As I crest the hill, I see a BMP-1, which is an easy one-shot kill. <laughs> but then, I am unleashed to a huge number of vehicles everywhere. I ran out of rockets quickly, but I was able to get three of them and crit another one. I begin my return to base, and even though I was actually shot at on the way back, I'm able to pull it off and I make a soft landing. And that is probably the absolute most you can get out of a run with the Japanese UH-1. I've seen six kills, I think. Joe Bob Lee did six kills once. My record's always been five and a couple of crits. Um, but five kills for this thing with 38 rockets is brilliant. And if you've gotten if you've gotten three kills, you've done a good thing for your team. You've done if you've gotten four, you've done an even better thing. You got five. You have used yourself to the absolute most potential uh, you have. And now, much later into the game, I encounter a MiG nine. As I'm heading back towards the battlefield one last time, I didn't realize it, but we were actually about to win. We were about to cap the point. Now, the thing about fighting jets in stationary helicopters is you actually usually have an advantage. Uh, you know, you're traveling slower, and if you're able to use your maneuverability correctly, like I did just there, you can dodge these guys without a doubt, and uh, sometimes even drag them into the ground. But, uh, you know, most helicopters don't have guns. We win the game. But I'll show you, guns don't always matter. Sometimes if you just have rockets, it's more than enough. I get the guy, he goes down, and that's another good game. Um, but you can see here, the research that you get from this uh, isn't that great. I will say though, uh, heading into the next game, um, that killing aircraft in helicopters is readily possible. You can do it <laughs> quite often actually. Um, you're better off if you have a gun. But, uh, you know, if you don't, you can make the rockets work. The next game that we're coming into, I've actually switched over to the American UH-1. Um, this game was a bit unfortunate uh, because, you know, I actually really didn't do as well as I would like to have. Uh, as we're coming in, you can actually see that there was a UH-1, but he gets quickly dispatched because he was traveling quite high and is an easy target. As I head in, I see what I believe to be a rad camp wagon. Uh, but I miss my shots on him, and that's going to happen a lot. I get a critical hit on a Rakuten Yaxpanzer, and then miss my shots on a Radkampfeigen. Miss, miss him again, uh, another tank explodes, and I'm able to actually get both Radkampfeigens with a uh, huge, huge, huge loss of rockets. I should have been able to do it with one taps. Um, thankfully, though, I wasn't killed by the Leo, and I'm able to get another Leo with the grenade launcher after missing a huge series of rockets. And, uh, you know, this game could have been so much better for me, but I, I missed a lot. And uh, as you can see, that cost me my life when I missed that uh, SPA over there who proceeds to get me, even though I was able to get the other Gepard. And that's uh, an unfortunate end, but, um, you know, that's what happens. You gotta be real good, you gotta be fast, and you gotta <laughs> be accurate. And uh, just as a little trick that I'd like to show you guys, um, the UH-1, I haven't tried it with any other helicopters yet, uh, but the UH-1 has the amazing capability of doing loops. And uh, you lose a lot of altitude, I recommend having at least 150 meters. You're probably going to need almost 200 to pull it off successfully, but it's a fun little trick if you have ended up really high somehow, or you just want to do some stunt flying. I've done double loops before, it's great fun. Um, and it's just a nice little thing to know about the UH-1. Uh, overall, the helicopter is just an average helicopter. The UH-1 Japan is abysmally worse compared to the others. Um, you know, the others can get ATGMs, they can get grenade launchers, they can get different rockets. So, you know, it's just, it's the average helicopter. It's your average utility, it's an average utility helicopter, and it's, it's fun. Um, you know, you have to practice with it, and if you practice enough, you can get quite good. Um, the extra rockets on the American one, I'm not sure about the German one, but the extra rockets on the American one are quite a nice crutch. And, uh, it's just a nice helicopter to play. So, moving on, we're actually going to start talking about the MI-24. I decided to jump there. So, uh, loading in. 
Uh, here's the Mi-24 now. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite helicopters in the game. I especially like this Czech version. Its speed, as you can see right now, I was hitting about 350, is absolutely incredible. Um, your entire gameplay is defined by its speed. Pretty much nothing else. This, this helicopter has armor, yes, but 7.7s yeah, are able to bust through thick helicopter armor these days anyways, so it doesn't really matter. So, I'm coming in, I spot a target, I didn't realize what it was, but then I realized it was a Storm Panzer. He shouldn't have been coming to this BR, I get him anyways. As I'm continuing forward, I spot another Leo, take him out uh, with a critical hit, and as I continue onwards, I notice two tanks, but I, I fell to my own trick. I was traveling way too fast to make any maneuvers, fire my rockets, hit the ground in front of me, and my engine's blown out. Uh, as I said, your speed defines everything in this helicopter. It's the way you do any helicopter gameplay in this uh, Mi-24. And it's the same for all of them, doesn't matter which Mi-24 you're in. You're supposed to go fast, you go forward, you don't try to maneuver. Maneuvering will almost certainly get you killed, especially considering you have almost no rotation, uh, I guess, rudder ac action? Uh, you can still call it rudder action for the helicopters. Moving into the next game, and I fall victim to my own trick once again. Um, I'm able to get one tank earlier on. I saw an enemy AH-1, but I didn't want to engage him because I thought I would get killed if I did. Uh, I see one enemy tank, fire my first rocket, and hit uh, the rock in front of him, but my second one is a beautiful dead-on hit on the AMBT. Um, as I'm coming in, I'm traveling way too fast, even at 250 kilometers an hour, to make any maneuvers, and my left engine gets hit. Uh, my horsepower is greatly reduced, my RPM starts to decrease, and I make the stupid decision to rotate out, uh, catch fire, and don't even get to fire off my last two rockets before the IMP ones get me. You know, the S24s, they're really, really, really good. I like them a lot. They're easy to aim, easy to use. As you can see here, I get another one as we head into another game. Um, I had actually previously gotten a critical hit uh, and damaged another uh, tank. And as I'm coming in, I actually am able to get down to a really low speed right above the enemies. None of them seem to seem seem to notice or care about me. So I'm able to fire rockets in and get a couple of them. Um, pretty much a perfect strike run with the Mi-24. And uh, I'm just gonna talk a bit about this vehicle. It's it's decently armored, you know, it has flares, the, the D specifically, some of the other ones don't, uh, but they pretty much all play the same. When you have these uh, big unguided rockets, you know, you gotta get in there fast, get the rockets off and go back home. If you're able to maneuver when you're in a safe position, you can maneuver when you're in that position, but you're pretty much dead if you try to make maneuvers right over the battlefield. I got very lucky right there. And as I'm coming in again, I'm slowing down. Uh, this time I brought the S5Ks, which in my opinion are some of the worst rockets you can find in this entire game. Uh, I'm actually able to get the Gepard with them, which was surprising. Usually it doesn't even manage to break vehicles, but he still got me first because he was able to lock onto me uh, using the X feature. He wouldn't have had a radar contact and I go in. And just a little bit more S5K gameplay right here. This is what games with these rockets are going to look like. Um, you know, as I was coming in, I got really unlucky and got spotted and hit straight away. Uh, I end up seeing this tank over there and uh, I just unload into it, but do literally no damage. Um, I spot another vehicle and I'm able to get him. You saw how many rockets it took to get that CV. Uh, the S5Ks are incredibly difficult to use. I do not recommend using them for the Mi-24. The S8KOs uh, are much better, however. And uh, something that I used to like to do a lot and still find really fun is bombing with the 500 kilo bombs. So I'm coming in over here. I spot a tank and drop my first bomb. It's an actual, uh, it's a bad bomb and I miss. But my second bomb, I get it right in between those two tanks on A and get a beautiful double kill. And, uh, you know, with these bombs, uh, something that I learned from playing them quite a bit is you're only really going to get kills if you're coming in real fast and you're coming in the sort of exact same profile you would come in as a plane. You know, I know that some people uh, try to, like, sort of barrel bomb them where you hover above the tanks and drop the bombs down, but that never seems to work for me. 
Uh, I think I've only ever gotten one tank and he was AFK. Uh, you know, when you're using the bombs on the Mi-24 or the K-50, you gotta come in really fast as if you're flying a plane. And, uh, you drop them and get the hell out. And this goes for pretty much any helicopter. Uh, because if you're sort of hovering above the battlefield, your bomb trajectory becomes much more unpredictable. And as a final note for the Mi-24, I must say that a personal favorite of mine is actually the German one. I don't own it. I wish I did, but, uh, I don't. It has a really good series of rockets. Um, you know, I absolutely love the auto cannons that these things have, the 30 mils that fire like that. Uh, so this is just a test drive, but you know, it's good fun. You know, it'll be good. They're good helicopters. Just remember to travel fast and don't try to maneuver unless you're going really slowly. And uh, now we are going to be moving on to the AH-1G. So as we can see over there, Detroit Fish, aka Joe Bob Lee, is own and he's small. <laughs> I'd like to introduce now as a guest speaker, uh, my friend Joe Bob Lee, also known as Detroit Fish, uh, to talk a little bit about the AH-1G. So uh, you have plenty of experience in the AH-1G, right? Yeah. So you, in fact, have made a video about the AH-1G, haven't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this video was called Knights of, si Knights of Cydonia. I'm going to play a short clip from it now. No one's gonna take me alive. The time has come to make things right. It's an incredible video, one of the best ever made, in my opinion. Um, and I really think you should check out his channel, check out his videos, check out uh, this one in particular. Uh, it's really good. It's the best one. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's the best it's the best uh, like close attack helicopter in the uh -huh. game. It's it's really good. Well, thank you for that expert opinion. <laughs> uh, you have what four hundred something battles in it, so yeah, really like glad. <laughs> I'm glad that the takeaway from 420 battles in the H1 is that it's really good. So thanks for the advice, and hopefully new players will be able to learn from this. That's actually that's actually a really tip. Do you mind mentioning that one about the rockets again? Uh, the, because the rockets are angled down or angled up, it allows you to retain more speed while you're while you're shooting your rockets, unlike some of the other helicopters, wow. like the Hueys. It, they're a little trickier to aim, but once you get it down, it's a lot better to have than just the straight rockets like the Hueys. Yeah. And now I'm going to be as brief as I can be with the rest of my AH-1 clips. I'm showing you an example of what I call super low flying, where I'm basically skimming the terrain and using full input maneuvers to keep myself from smashing into the ground. Worked perfectly, no one saw me come in, get a beautiful double kill, but unfortunately as I'm cresting over, I get hit by a random tank that was on the other side. If that tank hadn't been there, I really think that I would have been able to have a really good series of kills, maybe four or five. Um, staying low is your saving grace, and I think that clip showed it perfectly. Uh, one of my favorite maps is Stalingrad, because you can actually go below this cliff right here. My highest kill game ever, 12, was on this map. Um, and as I come up, nobody knows I'm here. I start with a C2A1. Uh, his spaced armor really caused me some trouble, so I just switched to the grenade launcher and went from there. And I continued on spotting a Gepard. It shot at me, but <laughs> didn't manage to kill me, so I just got him. Uh, and then I unleashed on the rest of their tanks that were holding. Um, I finished off a T-62 with my rockets and ended up finding a series of Leos. Got one really easily and there was a another tank that I was able to get with the grenade launcher. Unfortunately, once again, as I began my return to the battlefield, my engine gets hit and I go in. I'm able to knock out a BMP-2M uh, really easily and I spot another tank which I couldn't see very well because of the cameras. But I ended up getting him, the M48 goes down. Uh, then I started rotating back towards their spawn, but I spot another tank at B, uh, which was an easy takeout. Um, and as I loop finally back towards their spawn after clearing out A, uh, Joe starts, Detroit Fish, Joe Bob Lee, starts unleashing into their spawn. He gets the Gepard, which would have taken Saul out, target prioritization, it's a very important thing to do. And we just start unloading on all of the people who are inside their spawn. 
And let me tell you, this was an awesome, awesome game. Joe ended up getting 11 in this game. Uh, and I think our team totaled a uh, total of 17 kills um, for that one, which was pretty, pretty damn good. It was an excellent, excellent game and a great example of what you can do if you have a good squad. For my final game in the AH1, uh, I actually decided to bring out the Vulcan to show you guys what the Vulcan can do. I didn't get to use it too much, but I just wanted to show its potential anti-tank capabilities. Um, you know, I take out a Panzer 38 as he's coming in. I don't get why people bring these tanks into these BRs. Obviously, he was doing reserves, so maybe he was trying to do what we were doing, but with ATGMs. Uh, I'm able to get an M47 with my grenade launcher, and then I move up because I wanted to get out of the area. And as I'm making my way up the hill, I see a lot of commotion up. Uh, I didn't realize it, but there were actually a couple of tanks up there. I only saw this uh, T-55. I end up critting him, and then I notice the rest of the tanks. Uh, I pull a very interesting maneuver that very, very nearly cost me my life, and then proceed to get the BMP with the 20 millimeter, no problem, and unload into the next T-55. Um, as I loop back around, I notice that there's a mouse, and there's no chance I would be able to pen that in any way. A Begulit opens up on me, but I get him with my 20mm as well. I don't get why he didn't fire at me, he could have easily killed me, and I crit an object with the uh, Vulcan 2. I loop back around, um, hit the object a couple more times, but don't kill him. Uh, finish off the T-55 AM, put him out of his misery loop back around to solve the rest of the problems but unfortunately for me uh, there was a kugel that it spawned in and i go down and that ends the ah1 for me so i'm going to be showing the ka50 the last helicopter uh starting right now you know it's really tough to get people at top tier these days uh, I'm playing with the S8KOs on the K50, and uh, as you can see, I'm getting beautiful crits, and uh, I'm about to get a couple more, but I get shot down, and you just get shot down all the time when you play top tier in these helicopters, so even more so than the other BRs. You have to understand that unless you're really, really lucky, it's going to be miserable. You're going to get shot down, and you're going to get shot down, and you're going to get shot down. That's the experience I've had playing them. You come in low, you come in high, no matter what you do, you're just going to get absolutely destroyed. Uh, you get spotted, um, and you know, then you might get one guy, but of course there's another person who has their gun trained on you, you lose an engine, you go, that's just what it's like. Uh, thankfully, I did have one really good game with the SAKOs. Uh, I'm going to show this game to you now. It was on Abandoned Factory. Um, I came in, I came in super low, was using the buildings, and uh, I proceeded to pop up and I spotted a Leo to a 5 or to a 4. I'm not really sure what the different Leos are. But um, before I got a chance to shoot at him, I got shot at by this Trump Abrams, I think it was. And. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, he actually damaged my aircraft enough that I had uh, some engine problems. So I dipped back down, I didn't really want to die, um, and I just decided to focus on the Leo. And, uh, you know, I'm going around him, firing rockets, uh, and then ADAT spawns in, and the second ADAT spawns in, neither of them realized I was right overhead. So I proceeded to immediately duck the cover right behind him because I really didn't want to die to double A dances. I watched the K-52, I came in with go down in flames and uh, decided to hold behind for a little bit. Coming up, the moment I had the opportunity, it's an easy double kill. They had no idea where I'd come from and I felt so good when I did that. It was the best feeling in the world. Then there was the Leo 2A6, I get him too. Uh, Leo 2A5, excuse me, I'm no, already no, 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 way too no, into no, no, power, no. and I ran into a bunch of different uh, tanks over here. Now, as you can see, my aim is actually really off. Uh, as I fire, uh, the rockets are bracketing the tanks. I'm not hitting with one or the other. Um, I'm able to crit that last Merkava, and I begin my return to the airfield. Um, but unfortunately, as I'm making my return, I get killed by a starfighter. Uh, but, you know, that was probably the absolute best you can expect out of a K-50 game. It's, it's a tough, tough vehicle to play these days. It used to be much better. You know, if you have it, just bring the ATGMs. I will not support you bringing the ATGMs. I think it's totally gross when you bring the ATGMs. Whenever, uh, 
whenever I bring them, um, I bring them for the, the missiles and I use them against other aircraft. Uh, but I just recommend bringing, don't bring the AT jams. Don't do that. Don't do that to the enemy team. It's not nice of you. And now for my uh, final piece of advice in this tutorial, bombing in the K-50 and other helicopters that have bomb sites. I think I don't really need to explain this at all. You know, you have to be decent at understanding how tanks work, but you literally have a crosshair on your screen that you can use to hit targets with. Um, I hit my first target perfectly, of course, and then missed the second one because I thought there were still two tanks in the smoke. As it turned out, they both died. Um, so as long as you understand what you're doing, as long as you know how to bomb and you can click on targets, uh, you know, this really shouldn't be that big of a deal. And uh, it's fun, you know, it's cool to get bomb kills. So if you want to play with bombs, then please do. And with that, we have reached the end of our comprehensive tutorial on how to play helicopters with unguided munitions. This is also pretty much a tutorial as how to play helicopters at the start of the game. And, uh, you know, I did not expect when I started making this three days ago that it would end up being 30 minutes long. It's a long video. If you made it to the end, I must say, you either really want to know more about helicopters or you like listening to me talk. And either way, if you made it to the end, if you made it to the end, type A10 2021 in the comments. And, uh... Thank you so much for following along. Um, you know, next time I make a tutorial, I'll probably make it a lot shorter. Please stay around for more. Thank you so much for watching, guys. All the best. And this is DMSP signing off.